Bill, can you help me out, please? Call your fire department for something like this, because. <laughs> oh. Ah, top of the morning, friends and family. How you wonderful, beautiful people doing this morning? We got a fun video for you guys today, my friends. I'm going to be doing some snake enrichment. I was recently challenged by my buddy Riley over at Riley's Reptiles. I'll put a link down in the description. He was challenged by his buddy Ryan. I'll put a link for their video as well, for Ryan's video. Uh, they basically are challenging people to do enrichment some type of enrichment for your reptile to make their life a little more interesting make a little more make it a little more better and i accepted the challenge and i'm going to be nominating somebody myself to accept this challenge as well hopefully see if they can handle it <laughs> i'm sure they can but uh first first i would like to just share with you my my dorkism yes I, i'm quite a dork at times and one of those dork things is i love making paper airplanes and this morning i think i made probably the best paper airplane i've made yet in my life it's the same style paper airplane i've been making since i was a kid but this time i layered it up with two layers of paper check this out Yes, I, I'm a nerd and I take full responsibility for my nerdishness. <laughs> so, nope. all right, before I get into the, the, uh, before I get into the, before I get into the enrichment challenge, I just want to say one more time, my buddy Riley, if you guys aren't following him over there on YouTube, Riley was a reptile keeper at Santa Barbara Zoo and is currently a reptile keeper at the Sacramento Zoo. Very, very knowledgeable person when it comes to reptile husbandry. Uh, if you're not following his channel already, I highly recommend it. Um, again, the link is down there in the description. And so one of the things, this indigo does have a rat in her belly. I generally don't handle snakes when they have rats in their bellies, but for short extended period of time, and just for this video, I wanted to get it out before we head off to Utah. So uh, this is our female indigo snake, Drymarcon cooperi, cooperi, however you want to say it. And one of the things I do for these guys, um, now I know this challenge is supposed to kind of be maybe be doing something new, but this is something I've already done already. And it's actually the second thing I'm gonna do involves uh, some pretty fun stuff. We're gonna be doing up in the trees over there. I like to bring her out in the sun, in the direct sunlight for, for 10 minutes or so, um, maybe once or twice a week, just to let her get that benefit of the full power of the sun and get that vitamin D synthesis happening. Many snakes do have, and especially diurnal species like this, have benefit that has been shown from UV light. Uh, and there was actually only one species in this study, and I'll see if I can find that study again and link it down below. Ball pythons are one of the few species that showed no reaction whatsoever from UV, UVB light, but the only species of many that were part of this study. So I just like to let her come out here and, and chill in my hands. You don't actually have to put them on the ground or anything. You can just hang with them like this. And sorry, we got kids going crazy in the background. <laughs> it's just kind of the way life is right now, man. This was something that was recommended to me by the breeder Robert Bruce who produced these animals. I like to follow a breeder's advice, especially if they have you know, years and years of experience with a particular species like Robert does with these guys right here. So this is it. This is enrichment number one. And it kind of gets them out, gets them checking out the environment. And look at what she's doing with her tongue. She's kind of, she's doing some stuff that she never does inside at all, which you know, she's definitely going in a bit of a defensive mode here. But if she does it again, she's she was doing this little tongue flick. It's just super slow. Almost kind of remind me of the way a rattlesnake flicks her tongue. See that little tiny, super slow tongue flick? Let's see, she'll, she'll do it again. And it's a very controlled and interesting thing that I only see her do when we come out here. She never does this inside the enclosure. See that little tiny tongue flick like that? It's so cool to see. Even though it's probably her being a little bit on defense, it's still really interesting to see that. Uh, hopefully I'm even in the shot here. I don't know what's happening. <laughs> right, let's move on to the next thing. I just realized my little fluff muff, my little dead cat wind break thing was in that whole entire shot. Whatever, nothing to do about it now. Hey Noah, what? chew boy. What do you know? I know that I'm enjoying my shadow and I just got interrupted. Well, pardon me, sir. I'll let you go about your business. Take him out. 
Say hi, T. Say hi, T. <laughs> hey, Eli. What? What do you know? I know. Granite and I'm mining for it, and that's why I know. You're mining for granite? Yep. Well, I'll let you get about your business too, sir. I've got business to do myself. You enjoy yourself now. All right, enrichment program number two. Now, this again is something I've done in the past, but thank you, Riley, again, because I haven't done this for a little while now. And I've been kind of getting out of practice with it, so I'm reintroducing it to my husbandry. And this could potentially be taken as controversial, taking your snakes outside and, and whatnot, but for me, We've got the space around here and exercise for a snake such as like what we're about to do climb this tree right here it's just so beneficial for the snake i believe and it really helps their metabolism build up these guys spend a lot of time in enclosures and just to give them this little bit of outside time is really what i find you can get the most benefit for the snake in the shortest amount of time and granted these mainline retics don't necessarily take back up to the trees in their adulthood. They're more arboreal when they're, they're younger. But I find that this little tree time is something that's really, <laughs> it's, it's not just beneficial for me, or it's not just beneficial for the snake, it's very much beneficial for me because I, I get to have an interaction with the snake and I'm gonna be climbing. I'm a tree climber and now I get to climb too because there she goes. <laughs> So can you help me out, please? Wherever, as long as you can get me and Caleb. Is it on? Yeah. Yes. Should be. No, can you come up higher, like to where you're, get higher? I'm trying to get all kinds of angles. Okay. Trust me, it looks good. Over here. Um, I'll do what I think. Well, I want to be able to talk to the camera, so I need it closer. I know. I'm trying to get a good shot from here. So, if you're not at least somewhat athletic, I highly don't recommend this, because if you're not able to climb a tree, this could be a real problem. I have no pl problem climbing anywhere in this tree, and I know that, so I'm comfortable doing it. I didn't intend for her to go up this side of the branch, but she just kind of took off. But like I said, I know that I can climb anywhere in this tree, so if you're going to try this kind of more extreme method of enrichment, make sure you're physically able to climb any tree you're going to put your snake in, or at least have access to it. Pay attention to what tree you're putting them in. Know that they're not going to be able to climb to an even higher tree that you can't get to. Or have a ladder. Um, have a ladder, you know. Don't want to have to call your fire department for something like this, because... That wouldn't be a very good look for the community. I am an avid tree climber, been tr climbing trees since I could walk, so I'm very comfortable with this situation. So, it's kind of cool. Like, th this is just, this is double enrichment. The snakes get the enrichment from climbing. I'm getting big enrichment for myself, going back to my tree climbing roots and in the tree with the snake. This is like my childhood dreams kind of realized right here. It's pretty sweet. I do have plans to eventually have an enclosure that this can be accomplished inside the enclosure. I'd like that for many of my snakes, uh, especially my climbing species, even though retics aren't necessarily climbers as they get older. As I mentioned, it still could benefit them to have some height to climb up and get high. And I actually haven't gotten a new snake here since January 2019 because my next goals are to have enclosures like this for for snakes and, and in the meantime I'm just kind of biding my time as far as getting more snakes I want to have better enclosures but in the meantime when I since we don't have that space yet this is what I do for enrichment I bring them outside I have them climb trees I let them get this this movement that they need and something you guys could do too remember the tree part be, use extreme caution and if you have smaller snakes outside be aware of birds of prey potentially circling above and anything like that. You know, just be very cautious of your surroundings. Use common sense. I know common sense seems to be a dying trend, but common sense.
No, go this way here, Will. Say can never get please. Does it matter how long you leave them out? Uh, this is the side of the tree I was hoping she was gonna climb on. But you know. She's up there, periscoping in the tree. Enrichment, it's a good one. I'm gonna go and get a second snake, the one that's even cooler to watch climb. Of course, this being a video, I want it to be not just something that's cool for the snake, but cool for you guys visually to check out and be like, ooh, that's cool looking, man. <laughs> You need some exercise? Climb a tree with some snakes. <laughs> All right, now, that was the scrub python in the tree. Just be very cautious, be very careful what you do. In fact, I don't recommend doing this. I don't recommend doing it at all, because it it's, can be dangerous. I had to chase this snake. Scrub pythons are pretty quick, pretty quick snakes. I had to chase this snake up the tree with a, uh, with tongs in my hands, and I, but I knew I could do it. Like I said, I knew that I'm capable of climbing this entire tree. So <laughs> it was definitely an experience. It's like mind plus physical, like, cause you know, you don't want to fall out of the tree. So you gotta be calculated, but you gotta be quick because these snakes are fast. So definitely a, an enrichment experience for all of us. What you can do, get some of this grape wood or any kind of a big tree thing. This is obviously a little tiny piece, but you could just put a piece in your yard where it can't climb higher than your head or, or where there's only one space where it can go up, climb high, and then it has only one place to come back down. Can't reach out to other branches of higher trees. Things like that. I know we've got a lot of trees around here. You're like, how is that possible? Well, it's not. I'm not smart. <laughs> but I do like to have fun with my snakes and uh, let them have fun with me and get some different experiences than they would be getting inside their enclosures, which I feel like we, we got enrichment covered. Definitely one thing to note is that these guys are getting a huge amount of stimulus from this. The behaviors that you will observe while your snakes are doing something like this, you, stuff you will never see it, them doing their enclosure. Eventually, maybe someday I'll be able to get a big enclosure for them that uh, meets these needs indoors. That would be amazing. I do need to poke the next person on this enrichment challenge. I was thinking about Brian, but I'd say that Brian actually has done more enrichment for his snakes than any other big breeders combined in the last year or so. So he's he's good there. But somebody I haven't seen an enrichment video from in from a while who does really good enrichment videos and has done them in the past, Kevin McCurley over at Nerd. Your next buddy, I'm poking you right there. Can you feel it, Kev, right there? Dink, dink, poking you, bro. Let's see an enrichment video. Donnie, prod him, make it happen calling you guys out. guys all tuckered out and honestly so am i i hope you guys enjoyed uh cinematic snake saturday 
don't forget to go back and watch Riley and Ryan's videos. And then Kevin, don't forget to do your due diligence here on this, man. And just because if I didn't poke you guys, you join in on this thing, man. Do, make a video, make a post, do some kind of enrichment. Let's get this uh, topic moving. Uh, enrichment is fun. It can be really fun and beneficial for both you and your snake. And, or whatever reptile or amphibian, whatever you got. It doesn't have to be a snake. Actually, please do something different than a snake, Kevin. And yeah, uh, I'd also like to call out my buddies, Matt Garibrandt and Bradley McGill, yeah, over at, uh, what are we doing, snake? Wrapped Around Reptiles and O'Malley's Morphs. You guys too, let's see them. I hope you guys have a great day. Aloha, take care of yourselves. Take care of each other. Bye. Oh.